Howdy! Welcome to Aspire Mountain Academy. I'm Professor Curtis, your instructor for this course in Introductory Statistics. In less than 10 minutes, this video explains how prediction intervals differ from confidence intervals and shows how to calculate them. Let's get started. So in this mini lecture, as I just said, we're going to show you how to construct a prediction interval. And a prediction interval is simply an interval estimate of a predicted value of y. So in the previous mini lectures, we were looking at linear regression, and we were using that equation of the line to make a prediction for you know, whatever variable that the y of the equation represents. Now we're going to introduce the concept of a prediction interval, which is kind of like a confidence interval, but somewhat different. Okay? In many ways, the prediction interval is exactly the same as the confidence interval. So you're going to have a confidence level. You're going to have a lower and upper limit. But there's some important distinctions between prediction and confidence intervals that we need to know about. First, both prediction intervals and confidence intervals have lower and upper limits depend upon a confidence level. This is the thing they have in common. But the thing they have in different is what they center around. So a confidence interval is going to center around a population parameter. So remember before we were making confidence intervals on proportions or means or standard deviations. So we've got one parameter that's describing some aspect of an entire population. And we're centering the interval around that. That's a confidence interval. Prediction intervals, on the other hand, are going to center around a single data point in the population. So rather than centering ourselves around some parameter that's describing a quality of the entire population, now we're going to center the interval around a single member of the population. That's a prediction interval. Now, Essentially, what we're doing is placing a confidence level around a predicted value produced by a regression equation. So, just like we were saying before with confidence intervals, say a confidence interval on the mean, and we had a confidence level of 95%, so then we'd say, yes, we were 95% certain that the true value of the population mean lies within these bounds. We're going to say the same thing here. We're making a prediction with a regression equation we're going to say, yes, we're 95% confident, or whatever the confidence level is, that the true value exists between, you know, this lower and upper limit. So for each fixed value of x, there's a corresponding value of y that are normally distributed about the regression line with the same variance. These are the, the values that are inside the prediction interval. For a fixed and known value of x0, which is just a variable that we're putting into our regression equation, the prediction interval for an individual y value is given by this expression here. So we've got our prediction that's made by the regression equation, that's the y hat, and then we're going to have a margin of error that we add and subtract to get our upper and lower limits. So here's how we calculate the margin of error for the prediction interval with this nasty beast right here. Uh, clearly, if you're, you're going to want to use something like StatCrunch or some other piece of technology to calculate this for you, because doing this by hand is a, it's a real bear. Because before you can even use this equation, notice that you've got to get this S sub E, which is a variable known as the standard error estimate. So you've got to calculate this first before you can calculate uh, anything else in the margin of error equation. And this is another little nightmare of a calculation to do by hand and all on its own. So, yeah, you really don't want to do this. But one thing to notice is you've got n minus 2 degrees of freedom in your standard error estimate. We've seen this before. Uh, typically, you've only got n minus 1 degrees of freedom, but now we've got n minus 2 degrees of freedom. Anywho, you're really going to want to use technology to calculate your prediction interval because doing it by hand is, yeah, not that great. Unless, of course, you really like to take the scenic route. So let's look at an example problem to illustrate what we've just learned. We've seen before this example problem looking at shoe print length and height. 
looking at a correlation between, and we generated a regression equation that you see there at the bottom of the screen that describes the relationship between shoe print length and height. So if we're given a shoe print length of 29 centimeters, what is the 95% prediction interval for the height? Well, first, if we're going to do this by, I'm going to show you what a nightmare this is. We're going to calculate the standard error, okay? But to do that, we first got to get the sum of the differences between the actual and predicted values for y. So the best way to do that is just make out a table like what you see here. So here's our original data. And then we're going to take our regression equation, and we're actually going to use that to make predicted values of y for each value of x. Then we're going to take the differences between the actual and the predicted value. So we're going to take the actual minus the predicted. So sometimes that value is going to be negative, and sometimes it's going to be positive, and that's okay. So once we get all those differences then, then the next step is we're going to square those differences, and then we're going to add up all those differences together to get the sum of the squares of the differences. And that's what we're looking for. In this case, 29.45. Then we can plug that into, see, the top portion there of our standard error estimate equation. And that comes out to be about 1.919. Now, we now we've got our standard error estimate. Now we can find our margin of error. So here's the behemoth. We plug in everything that we know that t alpha over 2 is your critical t value there that's going to come from your student t distribution which you see there on the right remember we've got 10 data points but we want n minus 2 degrees of freedom that's why you see 8 degrees of freedom there in the calculator and a 95 percent confidence level means that we've got 2.306 for our critical value so then we plug in all the other values that we get from the data set that we have XO, remember X of naught is going to be the value that we're using to make a prediction with. So that's the 29. And then the rest of the values we can actually calculate out by hand using the tabular approach that we saw earlier. And these are the numbers that we plug in, punch that out all that on the calculator, and we come out with 4.67 for a margin of error. So now we can substitute into the general form. And when we do that, we come out with our prediction interval that you see here. So what we're saying with this prediction interval is that we're 95% certain that the real height of an individual with a shoe print length of 29 centimeters is somewhere in between these upper and lower bounds. Now this is a fairly large range. Okay, so, you know, how accurate is this going to be? <laughs> Well, you, you probably want some tighter tolerances um, because, you know, 9 centimeters, that's, you know, pretty large range for, well, sort of, I guess it's sort of, yeah, well, maybe not, I don't know. It depends on who you talk to. But it is, it is a fairly large range of values if you just kind of look at it on the surface. So is it really telling us much about a person's height? Yeah, I'm not so sure. The easy way to get this is in Stat Crunch. Let me show you really quick how to do this. So go to Stat Regression, Simple Linear. Then when your Options window appears, you're going to select your X and Y variables at the top. And then, after you selected the X and Y variables, you're going to go down here to this area called Prediction of Y. Put in the 29, put in your confidence level of 95%. And in the Results window, there's your prediction interval there on the right. Notice we're getting the same numbers out. And that's all there is to it. So that brings us to the end of this mini lecture. I hope you found it helpful. You can find more mini lectures for this and other courses at AspireMountainAcademy.com. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.